Hi, I'm Kurt from Ozama and welcome back to Workshop Wednesdays. After some well-earned time off, the boys are back into it here at the Australian Armour and Artillery Museum workshops. This week, Daz is going to give us a bit of a rundown on some of the more incredible parts that we've managed to source for our Yag Panther. And Jesse's going to have his work cut out for him restoring the road and idler wheels. So sit back, relax and enjoy episode 5 of the Yag Panther. Before the Christmas holidays, the Yag Panther was flipped over and placed on supports at a height that was easier to work at. Now Jess has to put a final root weld in along the joins of the hull. If you saw our Christmas special, you would have seen us tap into our stockpile of panther wheels. Usually, road wheels we obtain are in a poor state and require extensive repairs, but somehow, we've gotten lucky and only a few of these need work to bring them up to standard. This select few wheels that we've got, these are the ones that have, have got to have a little work done to them. This was wedged rock solid in there, tried to heat it up and, and hit it out with a hammer. So this wheel here is, is good to use now. But this one here, we've got these inserts that have been welded into them. We think that this, these wheels were taken obviously by like a farmer or something and, and you know, retrofitted onto a bit of uh, machinery. You can see that, that was the original hole there. What they've done is they've added a blank in and drilled some new holes. So we'll have to cut these, these blanks out and make sure that we can still use these uh, hole centers on the inside. This one here, you can actually see they've welded the original holes up uh, on us, which which has made our job a lot harder. So you can see the holes, the original holes are there, and that's where they'd be if you can see it. So what we'll do is we'll grind the paint off and we'll try to find the original holes. Line it up. Just put it on. And you can see that the hole centers line up pretty good. And what we'll be able to do is remark our holes in this and drill this and use this again after we've cut these hole centers out. There's only five wheels that we have to do a bit of work to. We're really lucky, really, really lucky.
towards the line in half, mark it, and I'll cut up to it and I should be able to knock that out. What size are they? Uh, they should go in there. Just mark that centre now. I think that's pretty good. So I'll mark that. You see what I mean when we take it off? That's alright. 20s is like semi lining up. Well, they're 20s. So they're 18. Yeah. Might yeah. have just to do a few jags and that, isn't it? Yeah. Try it in that one. Yeah. Have you got how many? You've got, got a couple more. Oh, there'll still be a lip, lip here. No, but you can chisel that off. No, I'll be temporary. so many really good condition wheels so you know to only do work on five that's really lucky really really lucky it's amazing that something so seemingly simple can take so much time and energy the front plate of our jag panther was found at a construction site that uncovered a tank factory outside of berlin and while this is a remarkable piece it will still need a little bit of work as the factory didn't quite manage to complete this one. What we're looking at here is this new old stock front glacier plate off a Yag Panther. It, we were so lucky to get this. This is, this is a, the main feature. This is what you look at. This is the first thing you see when you look at it from the front. So we're very lucky to have this. It was mid-manufacturing before the plant was closed down, bombed or, or overrun, whatever it was. We have to machine a recess around in here to match our machine gun port. The other thing we have to do is the main gun mantlet is held on with four bolts top and bottom. So we have to have a go and see if we can drill through this 80 mil armoured plate. We're not, not sure if it's been processed yet you know, properly for armour. If we get to drill it easy, it'll be great. If not, we'll have a bit of a struggle. There's a periscope that goes in here. So this is where you look out the glass here. So the driver's eye line is probably down below, so he's protected by this 80 mil thickness here. Everything's chunky on this thing, it's amazing. <laughs> now this is our machine gun mount to go in our Jag Panther. It's absolutely brilliant. It's been blown out of an actual vehicle. You can see where this, this actual part here has been blown off. We're gonna have to recess and bevel it in about 15 mil, because that's where it would have been originally. We've, we've measured here, our front's 80 mil armor, 
and then this is about 65 so that means that we have to go in about 15 mil here this mounts different to in the other tanks that we've worked on like the panzer fours because they've got almost a vertical mount for their machine guns whereas this one's on a 35 degree angle so that's why all this bit's missing this gives room for the machine gunner's head because of the angle of the armor they have to have this bit removed just so the guy can get in close enough to look through the, the scope Jesse has finished restoring the road wheels, but one of the rear idler wheels has taken a direct hit and Jesse will need to repair it. Actually.
Unfortunately, I made a little bit of an error in the time-lapse settings for this next part, so enjoy the next two seconds as Jesse puts the finishing touches on this wheel. And there you have it, good as new. Well that about does it for today. Join us next week as we check in with Glenn and Bo and the Stug 3G. So until then, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and I'll see you on the next one.